It's a beautiful morning here on the slopes of the hills of Kilimambogo in Kenya, Africa, in a county called Machakos. It is very hot right now and it's just in the morning. I don't know how the weather is wherever you are, but for us here, we are actually feeling climate change. Normally, at around this time of the year, we should be having rains. But this is not the case. It is quite hot. The mornings are cold, but generally we are facing very high heat. And so our garden is also facing the challenges of the change in climate. But I'm going to show you how it looks right now, despite the changes in the temperatures. This is African Mom's World. And if you are new here, welcome. For those who have always been around, thank you for watching and always encouraging us to continue showing or bringing you videos. I have not been on the garden for a while. If you've been watching my videos, I've been here and there, up and down in this country, in different counties, and I've actually shown you where I have been. I hope you enjoyed those travel videos. So now that we are back, let us see how our garden looks like. Perhaps I need to give a short background for those who are new here that Machakos County in Kenya is actually a semi-arid land. There are parts that are actually uh, have plenty of rainfall, but generally it's a dry area. And where I stay, it is quite dry. When we had uh, the El Nino rains in this country, Interestingly, this county is one of those that had the extreme rains. It actually really flooded. And we had a bumper harvest. While in some areas of the country, crops were actually just swept away. But for us here, we did a lot of harvest, especially for me, it was cowpeas. If you haven't watched those videos, it is a good idea just to go and watch them. So here we have the black cotton soil. And unlike the red soil or any other soil, black cotton soil loses water very fast. So when it rains, we have a lot of soggy areas. But immediately, even after just hours, the soil has no water and it just starts cracking. So that makes farming both interesting but a little difficult as well. So like now when we do not have any rainfall, we just have to water our plants or our crops. And we don't give up. It's a lot of resilience, but some things do well. As you're going to see in this video, we'll see some of those hardy, hardy vegetables and fruits. So some do really well. Another thing worth noting is that we have water, which is normally the borehole water. Some is already piped. But the problem is that it is salty water. So this salty water has an effect on the crops. After some time, we are not able to harvest well. And even when you do house chores, you don't just use normal soap. Liquid soap is just the best. So thank you for listening to this point and I want to welcome you in today's video and come along with me, leave a comment or if you have any suggestion or any idea, you are most welcome. I don't take this for granted because you have always supported our videos. Come along with me. So this is African Mom's Garden. And I've shown you this garden over and over again. But this is a new season. 
it's another time that I am bringing this garden to you. We are harvesting kills, not the normal big ones that you normally see, but we have some for consumption. They are small. We have actually irrigated them, but the beauty is we don't have any aphids on them. There are no insects on them. Only birds keep eating them. But anyway, we have enough both for the birds and for ourselves. So we have uh, harvested them over and over again. And we, as we water them, we still have enough for another season. Here we have carrots. If you looked at our previous videos, these carrots were planted during the rainy season. And they took really long for them to even just get out of the soil. So this is a raised garden. And the carrots have done generally well, though they've taken longer than expected. So all the time we have to put soil around them. And also just check if we have any that are ready. So we do this quite often. And in the process, just check what is ready for us to be eaten. The interesting thing is that we planted them on the same day, but some are bigger than others. And we have just watered or irrigated them the same time, morning and evening. So this is, I think, how life goes. That sometimes things are not the same for everyone, especially even if you're given the same environment. So this is what has kept us busy during this season. And as you see, this is a small carrot. This is really tiny, but at least there's something. And given time, all of them will definitely be bigger. So we continue with the weeding, putting the soil. And interestingly, we do not have any weeds. So it's actually just raising the soil so that when we water them, we don't have the carrots left out and burnt by the sun. And uh, so that they are all in the ground coming up well. It's not a very big space, as you can see, but in some places it's already cracked, even though we are irrigating them. So this cotton soil is not very good for these carrots, but as we can see, we have some. So we check them very strategically so that we don't hurt it. In case it's not big size, we don't pull it out, but look at that. That is quite big for this season it is quite big i think i'm happy i'm impressed that at least we are going to have some carrots because we use quite a lot of them in our food and uh, this weeding there's we don't say that you can weed them once or twice but it's just checking how they look like and then we keep adding the soil so it's something interesting it's very easy to plant but i've seen that carrots work better when you have a raised garden we'll try them next time maybe in a container and see how it goes or even just mix the soil maybe with red soil and see how this comes so since gardening is just a hobby for me it keeps me going it makes me happy seeing how crops grow so there's no giving up we keep trying and we save some money we don't have to go to the market all the time those that we can plant, we get them right here on our farm. Then right next to the carrots, we have some tomatoes. These we did not plant now. They are those that had uh, tried to dry up. Then when we watered, they came up again. So we just remove the dry leaves. There are very many dry leaves. And this is understood. And um, leave it for more tomatoes to come up those that are ready some look like they're started yellowing we pluck them then we have this purple we actually had planted several of them but some were male we cut them but these ones we are irrigating using the bottles these are water bottles and um, instead of walking all the time and pouring water we just put the bottle and this keeps it going. So this has not dried up. It has done really well. Continuing on our garden, we are also irrigating this 
vegetables that grew around this apple tree. And you see the cowpeas are doing very well. They are ready. Some are ready for plucking, as you can see, dried. And I really like this uh, type of irrigation because it doesn't make me walk up and down. Then I'm able to use also the waste bottles. Instead of throwing them away, you're able to reuse them. Look at this. This is an avocado. It's a grafted one. And this one has done really well. Next to it is just this African nightshade that popped up. And we continued irrigating it together with the avocado. And just look at it. It's looking really good. The cowpeas around it have done well. Even the African nightshade has done very well. Look at that. We also had planted the grafted oranges. And so interesting that in between, so this is the original one down. It has done very well. But the one that has the craft up lost a lot of leaves. But generally, it is doing well. So we are going to have two sets. Let me know what normally happens. Do you remove the ones at the bottom? Or how do you behave? Or are we going to have two sets of oranges? Even this one is the same thing. Down, the original orange is doing very well. Then in the middle, we lost all the leaves. And see now, the graft one is beginning to sprout up. Though at the top, there is nothing. Very interesting how farming goes. So I decided to remove some of these leaves. I don't know whether I'm doing the correct thing. Let me know in the comment section. We also planted two mango trees. The other one actually dried up. But this one seems to be doing well. At the bottom where the original tree is, we don't have any leaves. Though some have uh, continued to dry. But generally, this mango is doing well. See where the leaves are growing at the top where we have the grafted part. We are hopeful that this one will do well. This is our banana. It is the green banana. It has already fruited once. And we are hopeful it will do so again. So there are sprouted many of them. And uh, the leaves have dried. We cut some of them and used them to mulch the smaller ones that are growing at the bottom. We also have some tomatoes here. And they are also doing well inside the banana. But we also have this pot that we have planted. Popo seedlings. Next to this banana we have this big popo. It's the first time that it has put any fruit, and there are so many of them. As you can see, there are over 25, and they're still continuing. This is a good season for them. Just look at that. They have withstood this hot climate. So I think we need to plant more purple trees and get some value for the irrigation. We have this popular vegetable. Some people call it binges. Others eggplant. Others biringanya. I had planted several of them. Others died. There are just a few left. Maybe five. But I'm impressed that some are already putting more leaves. Flowering. Just look at that. We will not go without binges. Look at that. It's already flowering. So we will get something out of this. Next here we have the hot pepper. Some have fallen off but others are still surviving. So it is flowering. At the same time we have fruiting. So we have some that we can use even for our chicken. They look green, so the weather has not really affected them. Look at that. Yeah, these ones have done well. Then we have these indigenous vegetables, which we call muchicha. It's a very nice one to have on the farm. And I'm removing the seeds because I do not want it to age. When you remove these seeds like this, then more leaves are able to come up. And we can use them. 
to mix in other vegetables so i'll throw away these seeds and allow it to give us more of the vegetables we don't want to age it to age faster next to it we have this tomato as you can see we have so many tomatoes on it others dried up but this one is still pushing on yeah this one has done very well we had planted so many pumpkin very many but they all died now this is the only surviving one it is even flowering next to it is the african nightshade this section had all night african nightshade but they dried up even this one we do not know whether it's going to survive so in its place we planted sweet potatoes and see how the sweet potatoes are behaving most of them have dried up but we haven't given up we are still watering them because they are in different stages some look like they have they have died but others there is hope we can see some green on them so those small hills that we made and planted these sweet potatoes we are still watering and i'm sure if it rains right now we are going to have plenty of sweet potatoes yeah look at this one some green this is the most interesting flower or is it a herb the aloe vera look at it it changes color when it is dry season they are brownish but normally it's green then we also have some seeds on it's the first time i'm seeing aloe vera seeds i don't know whether we can plant them like this because we haven't planted any aloe vera straight from seed but it's a good thing that we are able to see this though they have splashed out most of them they are fallen but definitely we will get a few the most interesting of them all is this male purple others are drying and struggling but here it is flowering it's looking very good it seems to be enjoying the dry harsh climate i hope we are still together we have this sugarcane it came from very far a far away county called kisi this sugarcane is soft it is normally very sweet it makes good sugarcane juice it's trying so we planted this orange flesh sweet potatoes just before the other ones that i have shown you but these ones are doing well in the small hills they are doing well they have remained green and next to them we have the cassavas some dried up and just see how the soil looks like here it has really cracked but they still hope because we have a lot of leaves on these cassavas do you know what this vegetable is called give it a guess we call it nderema it's an indigenous vegetable it's a climber mostly eaten by communities in the western part of kenya that's the luya the luo and the kisi but it has to be controlled just see the way it has grown irrigation continues we cannot leave irrigating this purpose because it's the first time that they are putting fruit some of the small ones are drying up but generally it is dry and definitely we are going to have a harvest that's why we have to irrigate them but we are learning that purpose seem to do well in these dry areas and maybe we need to plant more of them now this was our original purple and it is already it had already fruited we got several fruits around here but now we have a second lot this is the second fruiting and they're doing well but we have to irrigate it as well because we just never know so our garden has so many things and looks like the weather has affected it but not so much but generally it's because we have watered them and so we have the area where we have planted the irish potatoes some areas look like they don't have anything but some places do so i'm using my shovel to lift up the soil and just try to check if we are doing well on this part of this irish potatoes where we have leaves already up 
we add more soil where we have very small ones we just lift it up without interfering with the growth but as i'm digging i realize that there are some sweet potatoes that are irish potatoes i mean that are still in the soil so i don't think this was the correct time to try and dig up this place i'm interfering with them you see my shovel is cutting some of those that are still trying to grow so i have to return them back to the soil and just cover them and should not continue trying to weed at this time maybe i should wait a little bit only when they are long like this with many leaves that's when i can put some soil otherwise it's not the correct time so thank you so much for watching i don't take it for granted for you to be with me up to this end watching our garden video and in the next video we are going to see something different in our farm we are going to look at our flower garden and i hope to see you on the next one as we review and see how our flower garden is picking up or coming up goodbye